The following is 100% spoiler free. Legend of Galactic Heroes is not showing you looking anything up besides the show itself, which is licensed by Central Works. Do not look up any names brought up in this video, or else you will be very swiftly spoiled. Please do not spoil the show in any way in the comments, or else they will be very swiftly deleted. Enjoy. You know what show literally doesn't get talked about? Legend of the Galactic fucking heroes! <laughs> Type LOGH analysis on YouTube, and all you get are just reviews. And the one person that actually did any analytic content on LOGH hasn't even seen all of it. So I'm gonna put on my best professional shitbag impression and rake in those sweet, sweet YouTube fun bucks. <laughs> God damn it. LOGH is an 80s space opera and the largest OVA of all time, and it's praised for a lot of things. Character writing, narrative breadth, complexity, world building. The visuals are pretty okay. And if there's one thing to know for sure when it comes to LOGH, characters are gonna die. Now, this isn't as extreme like Zeta Gundam or Ideon where. <laughs> but no character is safe. You see this picture? More than half of these people die. And you know what the worst part is? The show makes you give a shit about all of them. Legend of the Galactic Heroes is like Star Wars, but both the Rebels and the Empire are given equal screen time, both Luke and Darth Vader are set up as good guys, and there's a version of Han, Chewie, R2-D2, Leia, fucking Calrissian, fucking Lando Calrissian on both sides. And there's like 50 characters on each side. But this is really the core appeal of LGH. To quote one of the protagonists of the series, Yang Wenli, there are few wars between good and evil. Most are between one good and another good. The audience is given reasons to root for both the charismatic blonde brat, Reinhard von Lohengram, who by the way is like Lelouch, except not drawn by Clamp, and the modest and well-read military magician, Yang Wenli. And even though both are on the side of good, these two sides are mortal enemies. The audience is given a look into both sides of the conflict, but like real war, it's rare that we see two prominent figures in the same room with each other. If they ever encountered one another in a hostile situation, they'd probably try to kill each other. Which is the situation we find ourselves in one of my all-time favorite anime fights. Oscar von Royenthal versus Walter von Schenkop. You can call me Shades, by the way. Considering the likelihood you've seen this show, I should first make note that both these characters have had tons of screen time already, and the audience has reasons to root for both of them. Royenthal is one of the most brilliant leaders on Reinhardt's side, a tactical fleet admiral with even his own poignant backstory. This one, this one, this one, this one. But he's no pushover. Let's just say Royenthal is in the position he's in for good reason. As great of a leader and strategist Royenthal is, he's still a trained and capable soldier. Shenkov, on the other hand, is... well... he has an axe. It's a good time. Shenkov is the ultimate badass, the big action hero of the show. He is smart, if not very bravely stupid, and with a history of defecting the Empire at an early age, he has a strong loyalty to the Free Planets Alliance and Yang himself. He's one of my favorite characters in the show. So the two of them being on the same ship is already kind of nerve-wracking. If they ran into each other, who knows what might happen? At the start of the conflict, we see the crew of the ship on high alert, and a little baffled by the sudden intrusion. But the Admiral is simply disappointed in his oversight. Not terribly worried, but still mentally prepared for the enemy advance. After all, this is a big ship the Rosenritter have infiltrated, and lots and lots of soldiers from both sides duking it out. What would the chances be of the two of them in the same room? I like that Royenthal is warned to equip an armored suit as a precaution, since the show knows that precaution carries some serious implications. Back at the entry point, General Shenkov is the first to swing at the enemy, showing us his strong will to mow past whatever's in his way in achieving the primary objective of the main admiral, which he reiterates to his regiment. He is not messing around. We then get some background from the Alliance base on how they succeeded in tripping up a first-class admiral like Royenthal with a second-rate trick and that while success in this mission would put them at a serious advantage, they still gain from the disruption regardless if they manage to kill or capture the Admiral. 
This communicates to the audience that the result of the incoming skirmish is ultimately inconsequential, like this isn't meant to be taken as a final showdown in a shonen anime, since it's already a win-win for the Alliance. Next is a sequence that re-stabilizes the two sides of the conflict, with an order from Royantel's subordinate to pincer attack the Rosenritter, reminding the audience that while the Alliance has caught them with their pants down, they're still outmanned and outgunned. They haven't won just yet. This is important to do in LGH, where the audience can so easily sway to one side over the other. They want to create a situation that the audience can't predict, since there's no good versus evil through line. In one way, the Alliance is the underdog, since they're making a desperate and exciting attempt to win. But in another way, the Alliance is playing dirty, and the Empire are the ones we sympathize with, since up until this point they were winning fair and square. From here is a sequence of Shenkop and the Rosenbitter fighting their way through a crowd of stormtroopers. I, I, I mean the infantry of the Empire. Empire. <laughs> yeah. And besides how this re-establishes how brutal and lethal the fights can be, I wanted to say that people complain about the melee combat in this show, and how like guns seem to be highly ineffective compared to something so medieval as battle axes. Dude, the axes are cool. Axe combat is metal as fuck. So you have the general fighting his way through this ship. And he happens upon a door, and he checks inside, and shit. Shit. Shit! Admiral Royental is right fucking there, and doesn't have his armor on. His two guards react first, and take out the general's own two guards. And then the general ducks, and wipes out the admiral's two guards. This is a fast and clear way to show how neck and neck the two sides are in the conflict. Again, stabilizing the audience from swaying one way or the other. Now, two seriously prominent characters are alone in a room, perfectly ready to kill each other. For the plebs out there, this is the equivalent of Colonel Mustang from Fullmetal Alchemist running into Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter. And you as an audience member were, first of all, not expecting this when you pulled up the episode today, and second, left with no idea who is walking out of this room alive. Just to be clear, this show has proven itself at this point to give exactly zero fucks about killing off major characters in an instant. Both these fuckers could die right here and now. Another highlight for me in this scene is how the two stare each other down, with Royantel being like, Okay, this is now happening. And Shunkoff being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah, this is happening. I love how the two of them introduce each other, as if they know who each other already are. And I like how Shenkov actually takes off his helmet, not just so he's able to use it as a surprise attack, but that he wants Royenthal to remember the name and face of his opponent. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Now, normally you'd think a heavy situation like this would take upwards to two whole minutes to let sit in, in your everyday action anime. The two of them staring each other down, building anticipation and gravitas. But no, that would be giving the audience the time to breathe and check their phones. Fuck that noise, your ass is staying firmly clenched. This is all the two ever say to each other, directly. There's no impassioned speeches made before or during the fight. The conversation is laid out before us in the form of attack and defense. Shrenkov strikes first, which matches what we've seen before, and Royental performs a noticeably graceful backflip away from danger. This is a huge flag for the audience because, while we know the Admiral is a soldier, we're set to believe Shrenkov has him on the ropes, since he's wearing armor. We've already seen him in battle, unlike the Admiral, and he's wielding a fucking battle axe! But this opening move, out of nowhere, highlights that the Admiral is perfectly capable of not only surviving the encounter, but actually fending for himself and taking the guy on. He flashes his laser gun, but not fast enough as the general swings his mighty axe, narrowly avoiding his face. A more ungraceful somersault followed by a laser shot, which disables Shenkov's battle axe instead of firing through his unprotected forehead, which was simultaneously lucky for Shenkov and unlucky for Royental. Again, as convenient as it seems for laser guns to be a poor choice of weapon, those who've been watching the series up to this point know how terrifying those lasers can be. Let's just say a good majority of important characters are offed by those things. Shenkov, in desperation, throws his defunct yet still dangerous handle and disarms arms Royantal, preventing him from firing another shot. This exchange of disarming once again plays into how dead even the two men 
men are, and by extension, the two armies really are. What we see next are both men taking a moment, breathing very heavily like they're out of breath. On the surface, this doesn't make too much sense, since just from these three exchanges so far, there's no reason for either one to be this exhausted. And that's because it isn't so much exhaustion as it is palpable tension. The characters, along with the audience, know the stakes here, the ramifications of either one falling to the other in this situation. This is excellent buildup that in other shows would be drowned out by some outside commentary or a slow motion inner monologue from the fighters. There's just no time to think for anybody bearing witness. We catch ourselves breathing heavy along with them, the briefest of respites for everyone involved before the exchange continues. Shenkoff reveals his secondary weapon, a massive hunting knife, and <laughs> <laughs> and lunges savagely at the Admiral. Royantel manages to catch the swing and kick the General away with such force that he sends him to the opposite wall, almost knocking the wind out of him. It goes by so quick that the audience is hardly able to register it, but the fact the Admiral was able to have those reflexes, as well as that amount of brute strength, shows how well and evenly matched the two are, despite all appearances. Remarkably, since up to this point the Admiral has been playing mostly self-defense, instead of using this chance to escape, Royantel grabs a knife from one of the fallen Rosenmitter, as if he wants to continue the fight. Keep this moment in mind, because I'm going to bring it up later. Shenkov is quick to try again as the two unleash a series of parries with each other. This is the point of the fight where, if you weren't going, holy shit, 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 with traditional sword fights, there's a lot of room for blocking your opponent's swings, and you also have reach, so you can be some distance away from your opponent. But a knife-on-knife -knife fight? It's up close and personal, and there's hardly any defensive maneuvers to choose from, and these aren't ginger stabby stabs either. These are full-blown swings that even a graze to a major blood vein would end it. And of course, all this time, the audience is left unsure who to root for, and what's going to happen. How will this end? This is white knuckled fights at their finest. Keep in mind too that this is not very impressive visually. This fight, and most of LOGH in general, doesn't rely on flashy choreography or interesting backgrounds. Heck, several of the action shots here are like they were ripped straight out of early Pokemon. Now, there's obviously nothing wrong with having an interesting location, or really good fight choreography, or good old-fashioned But sometimes that stuff is just style over substance. All it takes is a high-stakes situation with a strong relationship with both characters for a fight to leave a strong impact on its audience. Now, I think all that I've said so far is enough to explain what makes this fight so intense, to where I don't have to go into the result of the fight, due to any spoilers for those who haven't watched LOGH yet. But I still want to talk about the conclusion, because I think it also contributes to the effectiveness of the fight. So if you don't want to be spoiled by the outcome, you can skip to this part of the video and I can wrap this up. So in the end, who winds up with a knife inside of their throat? Neither of them. It sounds anticlimactic, but this is the best case scenario the fight could have taken. Having either Shenkov succeed in taking out Royantel, or Royantel upsetting and taking out Shenkov, would have given the audience a clear side to sway to. The audience has been getting attached to both sides, and putting the characters in a classic scenario of, literally, who would win in a fight, it would be the easiest way for the audience to favor one or the other. A draw was the best way they could have handled this incredibly tense situation, and to maintain equilibrium between the Empire and the Alliance. A member of the Rosenritter calls out for the general, signaling an end to the mono -e mono nature of the fight. Shenkov can't help but turn his eyes to the men fighting outside, leaving Royantel a chance to step away from the fight and allow both armies to swarm and separate the two leaders. This may seem like Royantel retreating, but it's more like a mutual breakup. Compounded with becoming temporarily distracted, Shenkov sees how much hairier it was getting, with others getting in the way, so he ultimately calls a retreat. When asked if he's... The Admiral replies, saying he acted out a ridiculous farce, acknowledging the absurd coincidence of the two of them fighting each other alone like that, referencing the situation they found themselves in, but likely also alluding to the moment earlier when he took up the knife. The Admiral also admits that he got too hot, and ended up going along with the enemy's pace, meaning he acted on his desire to overcome, rather than what would be the best course of action. 
he even recognizes the enemy as the notorious Rosenmitter, which Shenkov never even mentioned. It's a great touch this show does, in that, while most of these characters have never met face to face, every emblematic leader knows the name and reputation of the enemy line, each one revering the other for their great accomplishments. There's aggression, to be sure, but never animosity. Respect is a prominent theme in LOGH. We leave Royantel in this scene, relieved at his survival, and prepared to act more rationally in the future. As for Shenkov, he returns to the base bloody, and a little disappointed, but not entirely unhappy with his performance, seeing as he came back alive. He remarks the invasion was successful, so it wasn't as if they had scored zero points. Yang regrets Shenkov missed the opportunity, and the general remarks that perhaps the other side felt that way too, praising the Admiral for his skills in combat. Once again, we see respect being shared mutually, and neither side walks away bitter from the encounter, which for what's effectively a tie, is a refreshing feeling the show captures. The last line of the scene, Yang remarks, you mean you failed to change history? Which plays on a key motif for the entire show. The whole show is told like it took place in history, and how every event, no matter how insignificant, has the power to change all history. Since ultimately the exchange did not affect the course of history, Yang comments that they failed to change it. And while this is true, Shenkov is left smiling, as he knows that what he's participating in is effectively something that will go down in history. Legend of the Galactic Heroes is a military drama. Action isn't even a genre tag, but I was deeply impacted by the fight between two characters I really cared about. It's a rarity to see two huge characters from opposite sides of the conflict share a space with each other. Most of the time, interactions are over a video screen, or maybe it's a peaceful exchange, or maybe they never even see each other face to face, and they just hear about each other by name. This is, of course, not the only scene worth analyzing when it comes to LGH. There are plenty of other scenes I'd want to go in depth about in the future, because this series doesn't get discussed nearly enough. And I hope other YouTubers can take up the challenge in showing exactly what makes these galactic heroes so damn legendary. Thank you.